I'm truly grateful to the, uh, to the organizers uh, uh, for inviting me to come to share my ideas. Also, I would like to thank my own organization, Hamad bin Khalifa University, for sponsoring me uh, to, to come here and sponsoring this trip. And I'm sure many of you know about uh, Qatar now. The next World Cup in 2022 is going to be held in, in Doha, Qatar. Yay. So, so that means, you know, geographically, you are all familiar with uh, Qatar. So it is in the Arabian Gulf, and uh, and it, it's in the east part of uh, Saudi Arabia, and and uh, we have a, a very, very, uh, you know, and huge infrastructure being developed to get ready ourselves, you know, for the for the next uh, FIFA uh, Cup. And uh, I'm also grateful to the organizers. Uh, the moderator has just left, anyway. Uh, that, um, that to place me at the end of this uh, panel, because uh, what happens is, you know, the talk that I'm going to do it, it will be directly related to what those two people have talked about it, Salman Khan Academy as well as Coursera. So when they create the content, my job will start of digitizing it, our digitalization, our digitizing, our data transformation. And they also talk about the, tr the platform, that you have to have a platform from where you disseminate the information, from where you diffuse the information. So, so what we are talking about, that we are, ta we are talking about this, this, all these concepts, you know, digitalization and digitization, and digital transformation, they're all interdependent on each other. So, I mean, definitely we, all of you know that, you know, the information preservation is an important phenomenon. And without that, you know, you cannot have, any, you know, your, your, your I mean, um, anything, I mean, to, to rely on. So the preservations uh, right now in the form of, you know, hard copy, it's impossible. You cannot transport it, you cannot provide access. So, so definitely, I mean, there is, a, there is a role that digitization will play a huge difference. If you don't digitize it, you're not making that information available. So the bigger picture of my talk today, right now, is going to talk about, you know, various, uh, I mean, factors, preserving the knowledge and disseminating the knowledge. And, uh, and there are factors, you know, associated factors when you do that. So I'm not going to go into the history of how you preserve the knowledge, how, what, was, what went on from 1950s to 60s to 70s. Like, I'm sure you all know about the laser disc. It was in, invented, you know, uh, back in the 60s. And then, the, then afterwards, the, the laser disc technology is transformed into uh, CD-ROM. That was very popular, actually, in the 80s. And that has really, really enabled all the third world countries, you know, developing countries, to start utilizing the information. And, uh, you know, I mean, the transfer of technology and the, tra the, the transfer of information became very, very popular. Otherwise, the people who went to schools, you know, back in the 70s and, and 80s, you know, they were not really, you know, uh, in third world in developing countries for access to massive, massive information which was created by the, uh, by, by the developed countries. So now, we also talk about in Salman Khan Academy, localization, that will also, I will also touch upon that also. That's a very, very important factor, actually. When we talk about something, we always talk about importing things, uh, bringing the technology and bringing the information from overseas and from the developed countries. What about the information that you are creating? I mean, there has to be, you know, you have to, you have to preserve it. You have to disseminate it. There are people out there they are looking for our information as well, our culture too. So we need to preserve that. We need to we need to digitize that also. So I'm going to inshallah hit, you know, you know, I mean, talk about that as well. And uh, of course, as they say, I was uh, 20 years. Uh, I was at Harvard University. We did a project at Harvard, and there's a very unique project we de we developed an Islamic economics and finance data bank. I would like to share a little bit about that. Also, I will try to relate that to to the current work that I am doing in Hamad bin Khalifa University in Doha. And also, the, in the keynote speech, uh, he also, I mean, uh, loaded that, you know, the digitization is something that, you know, we, we, we are to look upon it, you know. So it looks like uh, the talk is going to be, you know, evolving over that concept altogether. So then, then we, we talk about building resources, I mean, you, you need to, you know, you, you, when I said, when they talk about localization, you have to build your own resources. You have to make sure that, you know, and, uh, and that digitization process 
will, you know, uh, communicate and disseminate, you know, the world that, you know, what sort of work is being performed. So there are a couple of examples that, you know, as you can see that, you know, this is, this is one, you know, that you can see that digitization, you know, the, the platform, the creative publishers have created, disseminate the information, you know, and then there's this another one, you know, that yesterday I saw the Asana Times, they talk about digitization made, you know, so much of profit actually, over five million, five hundred million dollar profit actually. So you can see that, you know, and then, then, then you can see that. I just talked about the, the right side, you can see the Harvard University, when we started the project back in 1990, uh, mid-90s, it was about the CD-ROM, and then on the left side is the Hamad bin Khalifa University, which is the online data bank. So you will not believe that how people actually, in the West, you know, they are intelligent and they are very curious what's happening in this part of the world. So now, the Islamic finance, uh, I'm sure many of you know about that, you know, AIFC is talking about Islamic finance and, and bringing, you know, Islamic finance, uh, you know, to this uh, region. Harvard University started Islamic finance back in 1994. The book that we published, Islamic law and finance, is still, it is the well-established textbook and it's highly cited. So look at the far-sighted of those people. Even if there's a phenomenon started in this part of the world, and that has been captured by them. And they established the program, they invited me to come and run the program. So it took about almost like 30 years to reach that Islamic finance to this part of the world, from, from only from, you know, from neighboring countries. So this is the slowness of what we're talking about. We look upon always, they think that there is something going on over there, we need to bring it. We forgot about own resources. There is something in our backyard that we developed. We need to pay attention to that. We need to make sure that, you know, we preserve our knowledge, preserve our culture, and preserve our heritage. And that's where the digitalization will go. Whatever they talk, two of them, they finish their job, the, my job starts. They created the knowledge, I have to digitize it. I have to create the platform. I have to disseminate the knowledge. I have to diffuse the knowledge. So, so you can see that this is just simply, I'm just showing that, you know, this, this uh, uh, the chart, um, in that you can see that the role of uh, uh, the platform that you know you create, and the, the research and the practice. Of course, I mean it is a natural desire of any researcher when you do the research, you want to disseminate the research, and that research you would like to disseminate it through a platform, through a library, through the books, through the periodical articles, or through the you know uh, any of the portals. All, all kind of medium that you can use to disseminate your information, and that information get into the practice. And then the cycle continues. And from the action research, from the applied research, and then the, 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 the data is produced, the data becomes the information, the information becomes the knowledge. That's a cycle that we are all going to go into, to the, through that. So again, this is, a, this is another slide which is more or less talk about the same thing and uh, you know, how you integrate the knowledge, how you disseminate the knowledge, and how you manage it. So, the, 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 the here also you can see that, you know, the data, information, knowledge, insight, and that's, uh, that's, these are the, the, some of the things that, you know, we, we'll get into when we talk about uh, the, the transfer of information or transfer of knowledge. So, so this, is, uh, this is quite uh, common, and uh, I, I, this is not something that, uh, 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 it's something, you know, it's available for sharing and for innovation, and, for, and uh, the interdisciplinary nature of that, you know, science is becoming, so the authors are becoming more and more curious and they're creating the information and the publishers are publishing and creating platforms, the libraries and collections, you know, they're all becoming, you know, rich and rich and providing information and the readers, they're consuming that information and they're making use of it. So this, this, uh, this, uh, uh, this cycle uh, is, is, is a continuous cycle that we perform. And now, uh, the, the, when we talked about the empowering our resources, uh, we have one example, the quote, which is uh, in, in, the, in the Arab world, it, there is an absence of an index, Islam, you know, periodical index. For example, like we have so many journals, they publish in Arabic, Arabic language, med medicine, in sociology, in humanities, in economics, and finance. And there is no way that these journals have been indexed and abstracted similar to the one that we have seen in the, you know, in the West. So that means everything which is published in that part of the world has been not been captured, it's not been digitized. 
So that is one of the projects that we have undertaken at Ahmad bin Khalifa University to talk about it, you know. So forget about the advanced nature of that, who is using them, who is citing them, and the impact factors and et cetera, et cetera. But even the basic stuff that, you know, we, we talked about, it, it's not there. So, so we need to pay attention to bring the knowledge, you know, and assimilate it and dissemination. Assimilation and dissemination is a part and parcel of every culture should be. So that's something very important, we should look upon it. And uh, the, the, uh, the, now the, 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 now the data usually is, uh, I like talk about the current, the data is, you know, is uh, inversely proportional to the time because the data get obsolete very easily and you need to work. But of course, we also should remember that, you know, historical data is also very important. We should not ignore it. We should integrate that into our research, you know, to make it. So the tomorrow, I think this data, you know, will be used in more, I mean, right now we are all busy in automating, you know, digitizing, but I think that tomorrow in the future, you know, the automatic, the, the, we will we'll be using this, uh, uh, this, you know, for uh, inter artificial intelligence, training machines, you know, and decision-making process, the data. So I think the future is gonna be more on the artificial intelligence, you know, and, uh, and the quality of the data uh, with to, to, to enhance, you know, and to make it more, you know, uh, uh, I mean, robust in making, you know, uh, decision-making process. And I think if you look at that, 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 that trend, uh, is happening, and uh, uh, the, uh, you can look at this, what happened 10 years before, earlier, the top 10 companies, you know, they were all assets for mostly like natural resources, energy, and et cetera. But now, today, these companies, you know, you can see a majority of them are, they are, you know, these companies, you know, they have information. And through the information, they, they're dominating the market, like Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, you know, Berkshire, Facebook, Alibaba, all of them. So you can see that's what it is. So you, we cannot ignore ourselves in which era we are right now. We are in information era. So we need to really pay attention uh, to these information sources uh, which creates the knowledge and the knowledge becomes you know, the insight and, and again, uh, it, 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 it is something that you know, we cannot ignore it. You know? And of course, the, 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 the last word that we, I, even the keynote speaker men mentioned about inclusiveness, you know. So I hope that this technological transformation, which we are right now and uh, uh, currently experiencing, I think will bridge the gap of equity in education and will empower those less fortunate with the ease of access to information and knowledge. I think that is a message that I have right now and I'll be available if you have any questions to answer about our own experience in Hamad bin Khalifa University, or what we have done at Harvard University for 20 years in developing the data bank. And uh, if you have any questions about Islamic finance, Islamic banking, I also have my experts sitting in the audience. She can also take some questions, you know, if you need. And thank you very much once again. <laughs>